This episode of Life Hacker is brought to you by Netflix. Welcome to Life Hacker. This week's episode, we're going to talk about freelancing and working for yourself. We're going to teach you how to ask for a raise, demonstrate how you can start freelancing without quitting your job, provide tips on how you can get a job without prior relevant work experience, and more. So let's get started. Asking for a raise is tough. It's an awkward conversation for anyone to have with their boss. But, like everything, you can get better with a little bit of practice. As long as you prepare yourself ahead of time, you should be able to get through the whole conversation without a problem. Here's what you need to do. First, do some research. Head to sites like salary.com or payscale.com to see what other people in similar job titles are getting paid. That way you have a bit of ammo when you go have that conversation with your boss. Next, make a solid list of reasons you're an asset to the company. Instead of saying things like, I'm feeling overworked, list the tasks you actually perform on a daily basis. Say, I do these things, and in the past six months, you've added these things to the list, so I think I deserve a pay raise. Once you've done those things, you can make a formal salary request, and it should go off without a hitch. If you don't feel like doing all that research yourself, you can try using a service like Get Raised. For a small fee, it'll do all the research for you. Just type in your job title and your salary, and it'll compare it against similar jobs in the industry, and recommend whether you should ask for a raise or not. It'll even help you create the formal salary request. And if you don't get that raise in a certain amount of time, some will even refund you for the service. Hit the link on your screen for more information. This week on Lifehacker, we learned the terrifying truth about peanut butter's upcoming price hike. It turns out that the wholesale price of peanuts has apparently jumped from $450 per ton to $1,150 per ton in the last year, forcing the big peanut butter manufacturers to start pricing their wares up to 40% higher than usual. So if you dig your PB&Js or just enjoy the occasional spoonful, you may want to stock up now. We talked about some ways to optimize your daily routine just a few weeks ago, but now Whitson has a full post on how to program your day. It's easy to get overwhelmed by your tasks during the day and forget about the important things like, say, eating. But as Whitson demonstrates, if you plan out every element of your day on a calendar from waking up to working out to even taking out the trash, you can stay on task and not worry about what you're going to do next. Finally, iOS 5 came out this week. If you're an unlucky user who seems to have bricked your device, don't despair. Adam Dotchis wrote up a full guide on how to unbrick your iDevice. Be sure to try out his tricks before breaking down and heading to the Genius Bar. If you're interested in trying out freelancing, but you're a little afraid to make the leap in a bad economy, there are a lot of ways that you can get started down the road to freelance without quitting your job. For starters, you're going to need to put yourself out on the market. If you're an introvert, this means you might have to go a little bit outside of your comfort zone, but you can't really get a freelance job without talking to someone. A good way to start getting yourself out there is to have a say in what Google says about you. Uh, potential freelance employers are going to look you up when you contact them, so get yourself out there. Uh, start a nameplate site, or maybe an about.me page, or even a blog. Uh, all of these are good ways to sort of get your name out there and, and give people an idea of who you are. When you're getting started freelancing, you should tell everybody that you know, your friends, your family, everybody, because they'll start to talk, and then you'll start to get referrals from people you never even thought you would get. So that is the best way to start bringing in clients. You also want to make sure that you don't undervalue yourself. You want to charge enough so that you feel like you're getting paid exactly what you're worth, not so much what someone new would get paid, because your time is important, and you'll get really frustrated if you're not making a lot of money and doing a lot of work. Finally, remember to invoice. One of the best tools we've found is Billable.me. It is just a website that you go to, fill out an invoice, you don't have to have anything prepared, and you just print it out or save it as a PDF and you're ready to go. Send it to a client and you're all set. Once you start freelancing, there are a few things you may not have thought of before that might be important to you. For example, you can write off a lot of things if you're a freelancer. If you need to buy a computer for your freelance work, if you need to write about uh, certain things, or even office supplies, uh, you can write off a lot of these things in your taxes at the end of the year. Speaking of taxes, you're also going to have to learn to pay your estimated 1099 self-employment tax. It's not terribly fun, but it's also not that hard to do. You just need to read up on it a little bit. For more details, check out the link on your screen, and good luck. Pretty much 
every job I've had, I've gotten with no relevant experience, and while this may seem kind of crazy, it's actually really not that hard to do if you remember four simple things. Here's what they are. First of all, you should dig deep into the experience you already have. Chances are you've done something that is semi-related, or at least you can paint in a light that will make it related to what you want to do. Another thing is get an interview. When you have an interview, you can be charming, you can smile, you can be really pleasurable to talk to, and when you come across as a really cool person, that's someone people want to work with. So you're obviously going to need some experience and some ways to sell yourself, but if you do that in a really charming way, it can help a lot. If you want to gain more experience, you can just get some do-it-yourself experience. If you're trying to get into photography or you know, maybe write or whatever, start taking some pictures, do some portraits for people, learn how it works, put together a portfolio, write a blog, whatever you need to do to actually get some sort of experience you can actually show on your resume or show to people in the relevant industry, it's always good when you can make it yourself. Lastly, the one other thing you can do is get an internship, paid or not. You can do it for a few months or maybe even longer, and that way you'll get actual experience in the industry you want. It's much easier to get an internship and then prove that you're really good and get a job. That's what I did when I got here at Lifehacker and pretty much every other job that I've had. So if you remember those four things, it's a lot easier to get a job whether you have experience or not. It's time to thank this week's sponsor, Netflix. Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies. Members can watch thousands of titles on a ton of devices like the Xbox 360, Sony's PS3, and the Nintendo Wii. Plus, as a Netflix Unlimited member, you can instantly watch as many movies as you want for one low monthly price without ever having to worry about late fees or due dates. As a Lifehacker viewer, you can get a free 30-day trial right now when you sign up at netflix.com slash lifehacker. Your sign-ups help support our show, so be sure to use that URL so they know that we sent you. This week on YouTube, Adam Dodges ran down everything you need to know about iOS 5 in 7 minutes. If you have 7 minutes, you should just watch the video, but if you don't, here's what you need to know. iOS 5 brings a whole bunch of new features, like a customizable Android-esque notifications pane, a new messaging client called iMessages that allows you to send free messages between all iOS devices, and the new Stand app, which consolidates your magazine subscriptions. There's also the Reminders app, which can track your to-dos and remind you to take care of something when you enter a specific location. There's a lot more packed into the OS update, so check out the video for more. iOS, of course, was not the only thing Apple introduced this week. They also released iCloud, the cloud syncing and sharing service that aims to keep all your documents, calendars, photos, and more in perfect sync. Hit up Adam's video about how to get started with iCloud and check out the site for more details. If you're looking to start a new business, whether it's a side business or a full-time gig, you probably should give some serious thought to creating a business plan. Essentially, a business plan is a blueprint for what your plans are for the business. It sounds pretty obvious, uh, but it can be useful in a lot of ways. For starters, most people need a business plan if they're going to ask for money, say, for getting a loan from a bank. Beyond that, though, the business plan is just a good thing to have to solidify what your ideas are, what you want to accomplish, uh, basically everything you want your business to do. It kind of forces you to hone in on the things you want. A good business plan will include an executive summary, a company description, your marketing plans, and a lot more. We've covered the process in detail on the site, and there are a ton of resources on the web for you to try it out. So give that a go, and good luck. It's time for the downloads of the day. Let's see what we've got. First up, it can be hard to stay productive when you're working for yourself, but we found that the Pomodoro method can be a big help. It keeps you focused on work for short bursts of time, and it also provides you with little frequent breaks so you don't go crazy. Tomighty is one of our favorite Pomodoro timers for Mac, Windows, and Linux, but if you prefer to keep your timer in your web browser, you should check out Chromodoro for Chrome instead. In addition to managing your time, you also have to track it if you're going to build clients. Clock is a cross-platform time tracking app that was a reader favorite in our Hive 5. It's lightweight and displays your time in easily adjustable blocks. 
As everyone can be particular about the way they track their time, be sure to check out the other contenders in our Hive 5 for more options. Keeping track of information can be a big challenge when you're working on your own, so it helps to have a good plain text editor by your side, especially one that syncs with all of your devices. We found that SimpleNote is the best service for the job, and it offers official apps for iOS and your web browser. Third parties have created options for other platforms as well. Notational Velocity is our top pick on the Mac, Resoft Notes on Windows, and FlickNote on Android. Finally, when you've got clients to bill for your time, you're going to need something to create invoices. Earlier, we mentioned Billable.me as a quick and easy option, but we also like Bunker App for when you need a little more control. Both are available on the web for free. And that is it for this week. Whether you're diving in head first or you're just going to dip your toe in freelancing, hopefully this will get you started down that road. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>